All right, let's continue now with variable force. So we're going to ratchet up the difficulty level a bit. Um, so with variable force, you have a situation where the work being done by a continuous force directed f along the x-axis from A to B is basically, ooh, and these little spaces don't look good, but this is supposed to be one formula here. It's the summation of the work done at K equals 1, K equals 2, K equals 3, all the way. And because work is force times distance, we have this as our force times distance. And remember that delta x, when we integrate, is going to go to dx, and we have this for force. So, so what you need to know out of this is basically this integral is used for variable force. And it is effectively the same thing as force times distance equals work, but now we are integrating each little section of force times distance. Okay, so, so now force is a function and it is not just a number because it's no longer constant force, it is variable force. So the first type of problem that we're gonna look at is the spring problem. And this basically deals with Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that the amount of force, F, that it takes to stretch or compress a spring that is normally um, at equilibrium, and you're stretching it X length units from equilibrium, that force will be proportional to X, where K is what we call a spring constant and X is the distance that we are stretching the spring. So let's do an example that explains this. So we have a spring here in equilibrium, and then this is stretched out to some distance beyond equilibrium. And we're saying that the force per foot required to compress the string is 20 pounds per foot. Well, this effectively gives us our spring constant. So that means that when they ask us if the spring is stretched six inches beyond its natural length, what was the required force? Remember that force is going to be uh, there's a constant of proportionality times x. So basically we need force equals k times the distance, which in our case is 20x. And I want to know um, what, what is the required force when we're going a half a foot. Keep in mind six inches is a half a foot and we need to keep with our feet in units because they gave us feet here. So we're basically saying that the force required to move a half a foot beyond um, the equilibrium point is going to be 20 times one half, which is going to be 10 pounds. And keep in mind, since we're working in the US system, pounds already includes gravity. So then they say, okay, what is the work done in stretching the spring six inches beyond its normal length? So what we did was we found force first, and remember that work, of course, is force times distance. But now we can't just plug in 10 pounds for force because that 10 pounds was specific to this one half foot. Our, our force is a function, and it's actually this function 20 times x. So what we're gonna integrate is force 20x times distance dx, because we're moving um, the spring incrementally each time. And then how far are we taking it? Well, the six inches, if you recall, is going to be one half of a foot. So I just need to integrate here. If I integrate 20x, I get to 10x squared. And I'm evaluating that from zero to one half. So I have 10 times one fourth, which equals five halves or two and a half. And then my units here are going to be foot pounds. Oops, and I wrote it wrong. I'm out, I about wrote pound pounds, but they're not. They're foot pounds here, which is the U.S. system metric for work. Okay, so then they're asking just a slightly different question. What about the work amount, uh, the work required just to move from three to six inches beyond its normal length? It's a very similar concept, except our limits of integration are going to be different. We already found the spring constant of 20, so we just have... Um, 20x dx, but now we're going from one fourth of a foot to one half of a foot beyond the normal or equilibrium length of the spring. So when I integrate, remember I got 10x squared, but this time I'm integrating from one fourth to one half instead of zero to one half. 
So when I evaluate at uh, 1 half, I know I get 2.5. But now I have to subtract out 10 times 1 fourth squared, which is going to be 10 over 16, which is 5 over 8. But I can just do this in my calculator. I did 2.5 minus 5 over 8 gives me 1.875 foot-pounds. And it should make sense that we take less work in order to move from just three to six inches than it took to move the entire zero to six inches. And I'm gonna do one more example before we go on to the next type of um, variable force. And this is the last spring constant example. So they're telling us that we're using four foot-pounds of work. That is our work already. So we're gonna put it in a formula, four foot-pounds of work and we're stretching the spring one foot beyond its natural length. So that means we're integrating from zero to one. They wanna know the spring constant. That's K. So basically we set up this integral and we're going to solve for K. So on the left, I just have four, and on the right, I'll have KX squared over two from zero to one, which means that four equals basically K over two, and our spring constant is eight.